Our first reading this morning will be Psalm 29. And you may find it in your pew Bible, if you would like to follow, on page 438. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The voice of God in a great storm, the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. That was a joyful sound. Our gospel today comes from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 3. And uh, this reading comes around a couple times a year and an important one. I'll have to include a stop at verse 8, but we'll have to jump down and share with you that famous verse, John 3.16. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who's come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. For God so loved the world that God gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, last week was a wonderful day of worship here at PCMK. It was Pentecost and it was Youth Sunday, and we were led in worship by our children's choir, our youth handbells, and one of our high school seniors, Julia Dalrempel, with a little help from Will Cosnett, brought us an inspiring sermon. The most memorable line for me was when Julia wrapped up all the things she had experienced growing up in this church from her baptism until that day of graduation. She said, when times get tough, I will remember I am a loved child of this church. I will carry that with me. Well, and besides that personal touch, Julia also gave us a beautiful image to understand the nature of Pentecost. She quoted a poem that talked about Pentecost setting a seal upon our hearts by the spirit of adoption. That seal is that we are created in the image of God and that we are loved. And it is the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, who makes that imprint. Well, today is Trinity Sunday, the Sunday which always follows after Pentecost. And it's also an important theme in our church year that we have once again completed the cycle of telling the story of God's love in the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pentecost, as we explained last week, comes 50 days after Easter and announces the coming of the Holy Spirit 
and the birthday of the church. And so now it is time for the church to get to work, what we call ordinary time for the rest of the church year, and continue the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of compassion, of peace, of justice, and share it all in the context of God's love. As Will pointed out last Sunday, and we talked about with the children, the Holy Spirit is perhaps the least understood member of the Trinity. We all understand God the Creator and Jesus Christ the Redeemer, but we don't know much about this co-equal member of the Godhead we sometimes call the Sustainer. Perhaps because of the invisible nature of the Spirit, we are given several metaphors in Scripture to help us understand. At Jesus' baptism, the Spirit appeared as a dove. And at Pentecost, the Spirit appeared as a flame on their heads and it caused them to speak in different languages and tongues. But perhaps the most dramatic image is that of the wind. In the story of the Pentecost, the disciples heard the sound of a rushing wind as the Spirit came upon them. And in this story from John's Gospel, Jesus used the wind to help a rather thick-headed Nicodemus understand the nature of the Spirit of God. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. We've had some big windstorms around here lately, right? So we can relate to this example. They say you can't see wind, but you can see its effects, like that little pinwheel this morning. Well, you can see even bigger effects than that, can't you? You can see the trees bending and every once in a while just breaking in heavy wind. That last storm a few weeks ago was really destructive in various parts of our area. Had to take a detour to get to Waterview to go see Ann Weissman as utility crews had closed Highway 22 to repair downed power lines. And the detour took me up through the hills of, I think it was the town of Purdy's, and there were so many down huge trees all over the place. It looked like a war zone. We had a few branches down here at the church, but fortunately no damage. The wind. Everyone understands the wind. It is invisible, but it is real, and it is powerful. The wind is air moving, and it is air that is all around us. Air is the fundamental building block of life. A child comes to life when it takes its first breath, and we die when we breathe our last. God created the first humans by breathing life into Adam and Eve. Air is all around us. That's how close God, the Holy Spirit, is. God is in the air that moves and in the air we breathe. Well, Jesus went on this little Pentecostal excursion with Nicodemus to help him understand. You see, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night with his questions. He was curious, but he just didn't get it. Nicodemus, like doubting Thomas, stands in for all of us who are curious and maybe have doubts and questions. We are impressed by what we hear about Jesus, uh, but we don't quite know what difference faith or belief should make in our lives. Well, Nicodemus has a small but significant role in the Gospel of John. He appears here in this scene in chapter 3, which, by, as we saw, sets up the, the most, uh, probably the most famous verse of the entire Bible, John 3.16. But then Nicodemus comes back for a couple more cameo appearances in the gospel. In the scene in chapter 7, he defends Jesus before the religious authorities. He says they should talk to him before condemning him. And finally, Nicodemus is there at the cross to take the crucified body of Jesus to anoint it for burial. Nicodemus is kind of like all of us. He's on a journey of discipleship through the gospel. He starts out with curiosity and faith mixed with doubt, and then moves on to conviction and even deep love and devotion. Nicodemus comes to Jesus and tells him how how impressed he is by all the signs and wonders that Jesus has performed, but Jesus moves straight to the point. He wants Nicodemus to move beyond being an impressed spectator to becoming a child of God, being part of the family. He said, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus doesn't get it. He's stuck in the literal, physical realm. He said, how can one be born again? 
Jesus is de dealing on a higher level. It's not being born again. It's being born from above by water and the Spirit. A phrase we quoted in our baptismal liturgy this morning. Finally, Jesus can see that Nicodemus is struggling to understand. So he brings it back to something really simple and yet profound. He sums it all up in love. And here, Nicodemus, this is what it's all about, Jesus says. For God so loved the world that God gave the one and only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Love is why the world was created. Love is why the Son was sent. Love is the message of the Holy Spirit. Love is at the heart of the Trinity. Love is at the center of the universe. Love is in the air we breathe. That was Jesus' message. That was Julia's message a week ago. And that was the message of Bishop Curry last week at the royal wedding. Many of you saw it and have commented on Did you know that his sermon on love was the most tweeted moment of that entire wedding ceremony? At the peak, he was up to 44,000 tweets per minute. He took the occasion of the love of a young couple to challenge the whole world to let love rule every aspect of our lives. And his entire sermon was worthy of repeating, but one sentence in particular hooked me. He said, oh, there's power. There's power in love, not just in its romantic forms, but any form, any shape of love. There's a certain sense in which when you are loved and you know it, when someone cares for you and you know it, when you love and you show it, it actually feels right. There's something right about it. And there's a reason for it. The reason has to do with the source. We were made by a power of love. Our lives were and are meant to be lived in that love. That's why we are here. Ultimately, the source of love is God, the source of all our lives, end quote. Our lives are meant to be lived in that love. Last week was Pentecost, and this week is Trinity Sunday. Perhaps those seem like quaint academic concepts that only seminarians would care about. They have nothing to do with my daily life. Well, actually, whether we realize it or not, Pentecost and Trinity, like Advent and Christmas and Lent and Easter, all tell a story. They tell the story of love. God's love for you and for me, the love in which we are meant to live our lives. Pentecost reminds us that love is in the air, as invisible and yet as real as your next breath. Breath. Trinity shows us that at the very core of God's being is love. It is relationship between three persons rooted in love. We experience that Trinitarian love in creation itself, in the coming of the Savior, and in the ongoing gift of the Holy Spirit. You and I, indeed, all of creation is drawn into that union, at the very heart of which is love. Today we had a baptism, which is always a day surrounded by love, but today's was special. Sophia Jordan has been chosen and adopted into her family in love. Julia reminded us that Pentecost is the Spirit of God imprinted on all our hearts, our adoption into God's family. So today, Sophia was a visible reminder of the invisible love of God, that it is the, at the heart of every person and every family in every relationship. And so like Julia said, when the going gets tough, remember this. Remember you are a beloved child of God. You are family. Like Nicodemus, we may not understand it at first, but as you live into the reality of that love, you will grow from curiosity into a life of devotion to God and others. And so like the bishop said, oh, there's power in love. There's a certain sense in which when you are loved and you know it, when someone cares for you and you know it, when you love and you show it, it feels right. Amen.